Hello, I'm Tom Dozier, and this video is on the diversity of misophonia. Uh, what are the differences from person to person that we see? And I see diversity in four areas. The age of onset, when we start having it, when it becomes severe, our trigger sounds, and our initial physical reflex. So let me talk a little bit about the age of onset. I did a survey in March of 2013 from people who had misophonia, they were solicited on the internet boards, and had almost 200 people respond. 75% were women, and there was a pretty common age. Uh, it was clearly at age 10 or 11 was when the most common time for the misophonia to begin, and it became severe a couple of years later. But in that survey, People started having misophonia from as young as age four to as old as age 55. And it became severe from age four all the way up to 64. So there was really a lot of variation uh, within that. In fact, if we look at this graph up on the board here, the blue bars is the kind of the rate of people having misophonia when, it, when they started having misophonia. And the red bars is when it became severe. And although we have a clear majority of the people is occurs uh, in the 8 to 12 range for starting misophonia or 8 to 13 and then becoming severe, you know, in the 10 to 15, 16 range, there's a lot of people out here. There's still people out here scattered out onto the, uh, the far edge here. And so if it was a hereditary condition like puberty, you'd find that it would, it would be happening uh, much more uniform. You don't find people going into puberty at age 30. But with misophonia, we find it... Uh, a scattering of ages for the start of misophonia. So that's really quite different um, from some people to others, although there's a common time. We also find that there's quite a diversity of triggers, that although the common triggers, we have the mouth sounds, the breathing sounds, the visuals that occur with these sounds, these seem to be very common, but the list of triggers is almost every repeating sound. So people have their own set of triggers. It's not that you have the same triggers. Uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm saying there is a lot of commonality, but there's a lot of uniqueness. And the first trigger that you get is unique to a single person or a single thing. And it's part of the individual's life in some way. And some of these triggers are very unique. You know, uh, birds, crickets, pipes, things that people say, an oxygen system. There's a lot of uniqueness to these different triggers. Now, there are general triggers that you have that will trigger you anywhere. Popcorn crunching, gum popping seems to be one of those that has uh, a very common trigger by anyone, anywhere, maybe typing, but you may also have triggers that are unique to a single person. At least that's the way they started, and some people still have triggers that are just really unique that only one person triggers them with that sound. I was working with a 15-year-old uh, young man here. He triggered to his mom's crunching. We had him face the wall. I popped a Frito in my mouth and crunched it and went, no, nothing. Mom put a Frito in her mouth and crunched it, and he went, oh, that's it. He could tell the difference in mom's crunch and in my crunch. Now, it didn't matter to another person. Any crunch might have triggered him. I worked with a person who's triggered to their husband going, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, and it triggered him. And didn't trigger anybody else. That was that person's unique trigger. Uh, another person who had this crunchy bread trigger from her husband. Very unique kind of sound. And we know kids that, that trigger to their parents' voice, but not to other voices. And then these unusual triggers, birds chirping, 
maybe specific birds. I uh, know a man who started triggering, started having misophonia in midlife, and he was in a situation where he had a bird nest built outside of his window. Not a big deal, a bedroom window, but it was a mockingbird, and mockingbirds sang 24 hours a day. And he became, uh, got misophonia to those specific bird chirps. Uh, Non-human triggers, pipes knocking, clocks ticking, and these are things that everybody has their own unique set of triggers. So although there's commonality, there's still uniqueness. And these unique triggers are based on your individual experience, the ones that you have heard. It's not based on an, on an automatic biological time clock. Uh, and it's based on your unique experiences with those triggers. But because we have fairly common experiences like dinner table experiences, then we have lots of the same triggers because, you know, we all have to eat together and we have crunching together and we get those triggers. And then if you have someone in your home with allergies and you get nasally breathing, then we're all around family and we get these breathing sounds. So, these are common experiences that give us some similarities in our triggers. But the one that I find to be the most unique is the individual physical reflex that comes with misophonia. And I talk about this more in, a, in another video, but 90 to 95% of the people I work with can identify a physical reflex, not an emotional one. They hear the sound, they have a physical reflex that comes as part of that. And it can be any muscle in the body from neck, shoulders, chest, arms, face, hands open or closed, uh, feet, legs, butt, I mean anything. And it can be internal reflexes of stomach constriction or intestines or nausea, uh, esophagus constriction, sexual arousal. So there's a wide range of these triggers and the muscles are often complex like catching a ball is one of the uh, a trigger for one person. And so this is unique to the individual. And that's part of what makes me feel that there's a lot of diversity that it's not just a genetic condition that kicks in, but it's something that's developed because of both the neurology of the person and the experience of the person. Um, some of these reflexes are almost imperceptible. They just get angry uh, or a twitch of the eye one, one young man had. But some is very strong. One person described it as running a shovel through her chest and out her back. Another person described it as pulling a string out of her spine. And this is a very unique physical response that those individuals have that very few others would ever have that. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some repetition if we have 30 million people who have misophonic triggers. But the reflex is difficult to perceive because of the strong emotions that you have. The overwhelming emotions that come so immediately after the trigger make it very difficult to even perceive that there was a physical response. So that's kind of this one-two punch, uh, the little physical reflex and then these strong emotions and also the little physical reflex and then the, the fight or flight actions that are taken uh, just make that physical reflex hard, hard to perceive. Now, if you want to know your physical reflex, and I cover this more in another video, you need a very small trigger, short and quiet, maybe a half second or less, barely audible. Uh, you can record the sound and then play it back so that you can adjust the volume. Uh, you can do that with a voice memo app on your phone, uh, though it's hard to control the length of the trigger that way, where the trigger tamer allows you to uh, control both the length and the volume, and that's part of the, the treatment protocol using the neural repatterning technique that I developed. So thank you for watching this video, The Diversity of Misophonia. Uh, if it's been of value to you, please make a contribution to the Misophonia Treatment Institute. We'll use that money for education, misophonia awareness, more research, and development of treatment. So thank you very much.